Hi guys, this is Andrew Burgess from NetTuts, and in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how to call uh, JavaScript functions on objects that they are not actually a part of. Let's start by uh, creating an object here. I'm just going to create a basic object with a name property. We'll call him Joe. And a greet method. This function will take one name as a parameter. And all it will do is it will it will alert this.name. says hi to the name that we pass in. Really basic, just like that. And so to call this, obviously, we just say Joe greet Jill, right like that. Now, if I preview this, you can see we get the alert Joe says hi to Jill. Very basic. You're familiar with how that works. OK, let's create another object here called Jill. And we'll just give it a name, but we will not give it a greet function. What we want to do is call this greet function as if it was part of our Jill object, even though it's part of our Joe object. Obviously, we could just add it to the Jill object, but let's say for some reason that we can't. What we can do is this, joe.greet.call Jill Joe. Now, let's explain what's going on here. Everything in JavaScript is an object, including functions. And since any object can have a method on it, functions can have methods as well. And so that's what you see here. Our greet function has a method called call. What call does is, is it allows you to call the greet method on a different object, an object that it is not actually built onto. So here we see the greet method is built onto the Joe object. But what we're doing here is the first parameter we pass into the call method tells us what object we want the greet method to be called on. Uh, this means that when we're saying we're calling greet on Jill, this means that any time we use the keyword this within the greet function, this will refer to Jill instead of its usual Joe. After the first parameter, which is just the context of our calling, um, any subsequent parameters are just the parameters that you would pass into the greet function. So here we just have one, which is Joe, but we could add as many more parameters as we need to. So now if we preview this, we have our first one, Joe says hi to Jill, and then you can see a second one here, Jill says hi to Joe. There's one other um, way to do this, depending on your situation, and instead of using call, the function is called apply. The only difference between call and apply is that apply takes a, an array of parameters as the second uh, parameter. So apply only takes two parameters, one being the context and the second being array of parameters which will pass as parameters to the function you're calling. So in this case we can just put square brackets around our single parameter and get an array with one element in it. And you can see here we have Jill says hi to Joe and then the second time which is being called from the um, apply method. If you have a hard time remembering which one takes the parameters, the raw parameters, and which one takes the array of parameters, Remember that apply and array both start with the letter A. So where would you use something like this? Well, here's a use case I had just the other day. I had an array of, with some elements in it, and I had another array with some other elements in it. And I wanted to move the elements from the second array into the first array. So what I've done here is I've just set up some testing to see how efficient this is. But what I'm going to show you here is up at the top here, you can see I'm just creating an array that has 10 million items in it. Then here, I'm looping over that array and pushing all of those items one by one into our second array. Notice that the push method that we have in an array, um, I couldn't have just passed the whole array in because that would have set the array itself as an element inside of my first array. Meanwhile, I wanted each of the individual elements in the second array to be members of the first array. So what I ended up doing was using array.prototype.push, I'm just getting the push method, that every array has, and then I'm applying it to array 3. Now array 3 here, as you can see, already has a push method, but it, this allows me to pass array as our second parameter to the apply. And remember apply, its second parameter is an array of arguments. Now the push parameter, I'm sorry, the push method on arrays can take as many arguments as it wants, or as many arguments as you need to give it, and it'll just push those all in. So here what I'm saying is push all of the elements in array into array 3. It allowed me to push all the elements in the array in in one single statement. 
How efficient is this? Well, I'll let it run here for a second. And once this loads, and I found this to be true in, in all the browsers I've tested, which is pretty much everything but IE, I think, right now, you can see here it's over five times as fast. So it's certainly um, an interesting idea. Anyway, I just want to show you how you can use call and apply to call JavaScript functions on objects that they are not actually a part of. Have fun with it.